Hi, I'm Cara and today I've challenged myself to crochet an Amanita muscaria or fly agaric mushroom. Uh, now I did do this before and it went horribly wrong. My phone broke and then I had to go into isolation so I couldn't get it fixed. Um, but I've borrowed a camera and we're starting again and don't say I ever lie to you because I've done all this work and I'm now going to pick it all apart because this is going to be a crochet and mushroom with me in 24 hours challenge. Uh, it's now around 4.30 so by 4.30 tomorrow I need to have a mushroom. So whilst I'm picking this apart I'm also going to take you through my design process. This is my crochet notebook. The first thing I did is look at some fly agaric pictures online for inspiration. Then I drew a sketch and added some ideas such as the base, partial veil and textured spots on the cap. I also included some ideas as to how I might do these things. I also noted what equipment I'd be using and I'll add a full list to the description box below. So I've got my white yarn, I've got my red yarn and I'm going to try and make the stem first. So the first thing I want to do is I want to try and make like a little, the little round bit at the bottom of the stem. So I'm going to make a bit of a, a ball first and then go up into the stem. So I will start on that. I've made the little uh, knob thing at the bottom. Uh, I increased uh, by six for each round and then decreased down to 18 stitches. Uh, so I think this is the width of the stem that I want. So now I'm just gonna keep crocheting until it's a height that I like. I have now managed to finish uh, most of the partial veil. I think it's the length I want and it was about 10 rows. I now want to try and make the bottom bit squiggly. Uh, I'm not sure how to do that but I'm gonna try increasing a bit and decreasing a bit and see, see what happens. Okay, so I started by trying to uh, increase by five and then have a little decrease to make a bit of a squiggle, but it's not enough of a squiggle, I don't think. So I'm going to try and do it a little bit differently. I have now finished the partial veil. It is maybe still a little bit too squiggly, but I kind of like it. I think it looks cute uh, and hopefully when it's stuffed it's not it's not too bad. So that's it with the stem. Uh, the next bit, excuse me not using scissors, um, the next bit is going to be a little harder because I want to try and make gills and I didn't want to copy off someone else's pattern of gills so I have not looked up any way of doing it. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to crochet in the front loop of the stem and I'm going to crochet out and make a, a base. So I'll make the bottom of the mushroom before making the top and then on that base I will try and crochet gills. And that's what I did. I made a flat base that I then added gills to. So how I did this was I inserted my hook at the top and then made longer and longer stitches as I went down. So starting off with single crochet and ending up with something like quadruple crochet. And I made 12 gills in total. Do you remember when I said don't mind me not using scissors? Well, this is what happened and yes, it was painful. <laughs> 
I think my biggest challenge was making the white spots on the mushroom cap. I wanted them to have a little bit of texture and I wasn't really sure how to do that. Eventually I figured out that it worked if I put three white stitches into the front loop of one red stitch, as you can see here. Then on the next row, I just continued as normal and put a stitch into that back loop that I missed. Uh, I knew that this might end up making it a little bit lumpy, but I think it turned out okay. What wasn't okay was the huge mess that I made. I don't know about you guys, but I can never keep my yarn neat. In the end, even though I had the same number of stitches on the cap and the base, the cap didn't fit on the base. I think I must have used different types of yarn, so I had to just keep going and keep expanding that cap. I ended up with this, and also this. <laughs> and I have to confess, it did take longer than 24 hours. Quite a lot longer than 24 hours. But I have ended up with a mushroom, and I have to say, I'm quite happy with how it turned out. After all this though, you might be wondering, what actually is a mushroom? Mushrooms are actually the fruiting body of a fungus, so much like an apple on a tree or any other kind of fruit you might have seen, this is only a tiny part of a fungus and most of it is actually underground in the form of hyphae. Mushrooms are only made by a particular group of fungi called the basidiomycetes. Its whole job is to spread spores. This is the general anatomy of a gilled mushroom. The universal veil is a temporary structure of tissue that fully covers the immature mushroom and protects it. Once the fly agaric mushroom matures, the universal veil leaves remnants on the cap, which you can see as white spots, and sometimes a vulva, which looks like a cup at the base of a mushroom. The partial veil covers only the gills of an immature mushroom, from the cap to the stem, and when the mushroom matures, it can leave behind a stem ring. You might be able to see these on some store-bought mushrooms. Some mushrooms like this one have both a partial veil and a universal veil. Mushrooms and fungi fruiting bodies can come in lots of different shapes and sizes and look very different to fly agarics. But in gilled mushrooms, the spores are kept in between the gills. Let's zoom in on that. The spores are held on structures called basidia. Basidia stick out between the gills, like these safety pins. Each basidium has four prongs called sterigma, each of which have a spore at the end, which is shown here using a pink pen. As you can see, the basidia are sticking the spores out into the air spaces between the gills. If we zoom in on this, we can see what a basidium looks like. Here you can see the basidium, the sterigma or sterigmata for plural, and the spores more clearly. What I find really cool is how these spores are actually transported out of and away from the mushroom. The sterigma is attached to the spore at a point called the apiculus, which is quite weak. Each spore has a little spike called the hela appendix. The air between the gills where these spores are is quite humid. The spore secretes sugars, which absorbs water very well. The water condenses on the spore in two drops. The adaxial drop is a film of water over the spore, and the buller's drop is on the hela appendix, as you can see here. So there's the adaxial drop and the buller's drop. The buller's drop gains more and more weight until eventually the two water droplets come into contact. This suddenly changes the center of gravity, causing that spore to come shooting out. The gills guide the spore out of the mushroom, and once it is in the air, it can be picked up by air currents and flown far away to grow some more fungi elsewhere. And there you have it. If you're interested in learning more about fungi, then be sure to follow the British Mycological Society YouTube channel and join us on UK Fungus Day on the 2nd of October. I'll include links in the description to these and have a lovely day. See you next time.